everybody bless the lord how are you doing this morning i hope you all doing good in the lord and really walking in faith and in victory and seeing the power of god manifest more and more in your life we believe that these are days that will try the best of us but we know that in christ we are more than conquerors amen so we encourage you to be strong in the lord and in the power of his might today we have been praying and fasting here at increasing faith deliverance ministry international and we really want to encourage the body of christ from this arm of the body hallelujah to to press on in deeper fellowship with the lord and to keep your minds and hearts uh, refreshed and stirred up towards him and know that he has great things in store for you praise god all right we want to talk about walk in unity we start with the scripture hallelujah until the get other things in place praise god we want to welcome you are joining us online taking the time out to do so we really appreciate it and we really thank god for you and for those who are here today and who are on the way praise god we know god is going to do an awesome thing today in ephesians chapter 4 reading from verse 1 it says i therefore the prisoner of the lord beseech you to walk worthy walk what worthy of the calling with which you were called with all lowliness and gentleness with long suffering for bearing with one another in love endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace there is one body one spirit just as you were called in one hope of your calling one lord one faith one baptism one god and father of us all who is above all and through all and in you all but to each one of us grace was given according to the measure of christ's gift therefore he says when he ascended on high he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men who did he give the gifts to to men now this he ascended what does it mean but that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth he who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things and he himself he what he himself gave some to be apostles some prophets some evangelists some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of christ till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of god to a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of christ that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting but speaking the truth in love but what speaking the truth in love praise god may grow up in all things into him who is the head christ from whom the whole body joint and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love this i say therefore and testify in the lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the gentiles walk in the futility of their mind having their understanding darkened being alienated from the life of god because of what the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness and with greediness but you have not so learned christ if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him 
as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that you put on the new man which you was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Hallelujah. Nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer. Hallelujah. Let him who stole steal no longer. But rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the heavens. It may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, and anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Come on. Awesome word here. Speaking and emphasizing on the, the unity that must exist in the body. And he says that's what the, 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 the fivefold gifts are given for to create that unity. Hallelujah. Did you notice that? He says that's why he's emphasizing. It's for them to have unity in the faith, unity in the knowledge, unity in service, unity in work, unity in the spirit. Come on, somebody. And he's, that's what he keeps emphasizing over and over in this chapter. Unity. Come on now. That we must be of one faith, one spirit, one heart towards the Lord and towards each other. And we sure know that that's why the word of God says, He himself gave some to be apostles and prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for that very reason. Come on, somebody. For the equipping of the saints, for the work of the nation, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. You know, a person says, the Lord said when the Lord did not say. <laughs> they heard some wind, but that did not come from the Lord. <laughs> every wind of doctrine by trickery of men. Trickery of men. Hardly in cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. Come on, it says there's some plotting behind it, some deceitful plotting behind it. Why they have taught such. And he's speaking about false teachers who would say the Lord said when the Lord did not say. You get it? Hallelujah. I would say this is what the Lord said we should do when the Lord didn't say you should do that. Come on, those are false teachers. And he says the, the true teachers are sent to guard the people of God against false teachers if you mark it well you'll notice that it's though it says you are being taught by the fivefold ministry from verse 11 it says they are there to teach and to equip you from verse 11 to verse 13 praise god they are there to teach and to equip you he says verse 14 shows you that he says is equipping you against you being immature, unlearned, untrained, and vulnerable to the false teachings of those who are false. And then in verse 15, he's telling you that these 
true gifts that the Lord gives is speaking the truth to you in love that you may grow up in all things into him who is the head that you may grow up in all things into him you pay attention to that you will see it amen so so it is not calling everybody false and saying you don't know you can trust and so try fend for yourself no it is making a clarity between those who the lord himself choose and those who have been sent by the enemy to corrupt and to pervert those who he has chosen and those who he has chosen is leading come on so he says the maturity is needed hallelujah and they have to trust the maturity and the knowledge of the ones the lord have sent because if they themselves are not mature how are they going to become mature without someone training them in it you get it and it's not just anybody and jump out there any trainer will do because we have a ten thousand trainers he says no it's to the training of the one the lord appoint to train you it's not you just pick up a trainer hallelujah so each one of them had to know because who was writing this to them weren't they responding to his training come on who write this letter isn't it paul was paul telling him say anybody what they are training you no he's is he's the one training them and he's the one telling them to use this teaching he's giving them as a means to decipher and to judge accurately who is of the lord and who is not what should they listen to and what should they listen to what should they embrace and what they should reject come on now because you know that when children are small they take everything and put in their mouth there has to be some trainer some guardian there that is watching and oversighting and teaching them what to eat and what not to eat what to put in their mouth and what not to put in their mouth what they can touch and what they shouldn't touch so, so they are being trained into it and the children are not left for anybody to train them any and anybody can just come train your children that's true because you have a personal responsibility over the training of your children and so they can't just say children is children long as that appearance oh dear them can train your children no you want that appearance train your children and is that ungodly for you not to want that appearance to train your children no because they are your children come on now somebody and if they are yours then you should train them no so and if you lack training then you yourself should be trained so you still can train them no so right so it's still your so it's not a thing that you say because i lack training in it then i have to make somebody else train them no you can still get the training while you train them because you should build a bond between you and your children with that training for future position that they in turn in future can learn some from it and have somewhat of honor and respect for you it, through the process of where you have brought them from to where they are now no, so, so it's a bond between parent and children so does god being father exclude that bond you know that god is not none of us grandfather his father correct uh, some people are like not sure if your father <laughs> god is our father right so he's our heavenly father no no when we call him heavenly father he he, he still doesn't dishonor those who are earthly father to us because he did still say hannah your mother and your father in the lord hannah them come on somebody so so he, he, he doesn't exclude himself or take away himself from the from the parents that he had given you to interact with and to honor them and to respect them and to heed what they're doing but we know that not every mother and father 
behave like mother and father. You get what I'm saying? Because some have become corrupt and some have become violent. Some become jealous and some... Yeah, they will just take them over as they would have said. They will just take them over. But we thank God that even in Christ, God still provides for you a godly family. Huh? So even when you are born in an ungodly surrounding, you still can find godly people. To father you, to mother you, to train you in the Lord. What is not for you to say, well, why will me natural mother and father didn't do it, so me going to do it myself. That can put you in a very dangerous position. Come on, somebody. Because you need to understand the and embrace the, 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 the means of parenting. And understand how that impact your means of parenting. I've found that a lot of persons who curse their 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 mothers don't end up becoming good mothers. A lot of persons that curse their fathers, the very thing they eat that their father did, sometimes they come back and do the same thing and worse. And it's at, for this very reason that they don't understand. Yes, the person, the parent may have done it wrong in the behavior of it, but even when they done it wrong, you must still honor say his parent. Because if you be done a man in him position, you know. Remember, say when your time in the position comes, somebody will and beat you down to you know. Cause your time coming. Right, and you you might think that they have it easy and it's not wrong, they shouldn't never do it so. But your time coming, you know, for you to experience and understand or really go. And some don't understand what parenting is until they become parents, no so. And they realize it, it don't look so easy as oh. all. <laughs> eh, you get what I'm saying? Right, you know, a lot it just appear to me on the outside. There's a lot of sacrifice and, come on, struggles and issues you have to deal with internally and externally. Come on now, financially and emotionally. Come on now. And all the things that are coming. So all of that coming together is not excuse for things to be done wrong. But it's just to show that some persons, because of lack of training and knowledge in some things, didn't handle things so well when it came. You then shouldn't despise those. And things that you go, all right. You get the thing? Because you're there coming, you know. Yeah, I want idea coming. I have to understand the thing. Because some don't understand this thing. Understand, we want them to understand. So the gifting is given for you for you to get a deeper understanding, no so. Yeah, man, if you get the deeper understanding, the, the, the process of what is happening will be easier on you. Because people can under um, operate and handle things better when they understand than when they don't understand. They are more tolerable for it when they understand than when they don't understand. And lack of understanding puts you in a dangerous place of making rash judgments, rash calls, and some rash response that doesn't embrace the heart of God. Because God is not lacking understanding. You know? All right. So he said, if you lack wisdom, you ask him because he will give you that understanding. Give you understanding and you, you will truly rise up of the odds and fear out good and come out good with great report. But you must understand the thing, man. Eh? Hello. Now that These gifts were not given so a person can play any, many, minor more. Yep. <laughs> you have to know that the gifts are given to the body for you to mature. No, sir. For you to mature and that that is needed hello somebody that is needed in the body of christ because so much person have been hurt and there's a tendency for hurting people to keep hurting others and we had god is putting a remedy to the to that so that you know that you don't have to repay 
evil for evil. If you keep doing that, you are no better than those who are before you. And so he's bringing remedi remedial measures into it that can remedy the situation is that we don't go eye for eye and tooth for tooth. Everybody going toothless and everybody blind. Amen. So you say you need to <laughs> come to a point that you understand if you then is ate, then you ate back in return. He says, What reward do you have? If they curse you, you curse them back. What reward do you have if they have have reviled you and abused you and do a man of evil against you and you do it back to them? He says, What reward do you have? He said, the same, the sinners and the ungodly, the publican and tax collectors do the same thing. But he says, you, you must be different. You must raise the bar. You must be the bigger one. That's where this is in maturity speaking for you. Hello, somebody. That you, you rise above the odds and, and display a different quality that will bring harmony rather than add to the fuel of the fire and say why it burning so high no you have to be wiser than that hello somebody and many are just adding to the fuel is either you are making things better or you're making things worse but it can be both is either your agent of change for good or your agent for the evil one that keep on making things become worse and worse. And they say, we, we don't live like that. That's not how we live here. And that's not how Christ was taught to you. He, he, they, Paul said to them in Ephesians 4, you did not learn Christ this way. He said the rest of the Gentiles live that way, but you don't live that way because you did learn Christ that way. Come on. So he said, if you learn better, why then you're not doing better? Huh? So he's still speaking to them with parental authority when he's saying that. He's not speaking to them just as a brother, speaking to brother and sister. He's speaking to them as one who has command and authority, as one God has appointed to preach to them the gospel. Otherwise, this letter wouldn't become part of the Bible, you know. It's a letter and write to church and it becomes a part of the Bible called scriptures. Word from God. It's more than just word from man. It's word from God. Right? And so that is saying something that many have not embraced today because they still seek to do it their own way. Uh, people say I'm not doing it my own way but they still have personal uh, private intentions. They might not voice it, but I tell him, say, ah, we don't voice it. It will still be seen. Because you, you, the word of God says, wherever your, your, your treasure is, your heart is there too. So there, there are certain activities and response that's still going to point in that direction that we'll know that's exactly where you're heading. Don't you? Right? So we, 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 we're not fooled. We know all this thing. Go. Hello. And you want to do the thing right, eh? You want to do the thing right. And so there must be an understanding what is the role of the fivefold ministry to the church. What is the role of the fivefold ministry? As we started out talking about. What is the role of the fivefold ministry? Is what is the fivefold ministry? The apostles prophets evangelists pastors and teachers and it says in verse 12 what are they given for right for the equipping training of the saints for what the work of the mission they don't need to go somewhere to look for training when they got a trainer But if they lose faith in that, they can always go still. <laughs> they lose faith in that, they can always go. But it says, it is for the edifying of the body of Christ. Because the body of Christ needs to be taught. 
edifying his means to build up to add strength muscle vigor stamina skill equipment and tools useful for success and effective execution of their duties hallelujah so it says till we so how long will they be doing that for them verse 13 till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of god to a perfect man come on we know this don't happen yet we know right now the unity of the faith not out there I have this one saying sent by the Lord and he preaching say Jesus only another man sent by the Lord and say Father, Son and Holy Spirit another one says yes, no Sunday is the right day another one says no Sunday is not the right day it's Saturday another one says yes you must baptize but you're baptizing Jesus name another one says no you're baptizing in the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit that I want to say, yes, you're baptized in Jesus' name, but you didn't say Jesus Christ. You need to baptize in Jesus Christ. Uh, oh, Jesus. Uh -huh. I don't want to say hey, you, you're baptized. That's all you need. Just for have love in your heart and love for another. You need nothing more. I don't want to say, no, man, you need to be baptized and be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want to say, yes, you're filled with the Holy Spirit, but you don't look like you're filled with the Holy Spirit because we don't hear you talking in tongues. That is not the unity of the soul. When you have those contrary teachings, you think that contrary teaching is coming from those the Lord sent. No, those who the Lord sent are actually in agreement. Why are they in agreement? Because the same spirit that is in one is in all. And the spirit is not speaking against the spirit. So when we hear things speaking against each other, we know that's a different spirit. Now many will not accept that point. They will believe, say, no, it's just different views. It's just different opinions. So don't everybody entangle to their opinions. But let me correct you on that opinion theory. Because it's a theory that you have that it is just opinions. The, the, the thing that is faulty about that opinion theory is that messengers are not allowed to come with the message with their own opinion. True and faithful messengers must carry the message as it was given. They are not allowed to twist and tailor the message. How they fail to put it and still be faithful messengers. So there must be a distinction between who is a faithful messenger and who is not. For you to make the distinction now who is really speaking for the Lord and who is really speaking for themselves. There has to be a distinction, correct? So, so that's why the scripture said in the Old Testament, it says that when the word is given, it says nothing should be added and nothing should be taken from the word because it says the faithfulness of the message is you giving the message in the content to how it was given to you. So when a person says, this is my opinion or my view on the word, it's not a private opinion you must preach of what is your view on the word. You must preach what the word say. So if when you say it, when we read it, we don't see it saying that you're saying something different than the message. Therefore, you're not carrying somebody else's message. You're carrying your own. You get it? And we as messengers are not sent to carry our own message. Jesus did not do that. Jesus said, the words that I speak, they are not mine. 
Huh? Huh? It's, if, it's, if it's not him, it's whose word? But you see, if you are Jesus, only you can't make no sense of that one. Because I, if I don't feel him word, then I don't a word, and I Jesus only. That's why we can't know who is speaking the truth and who is not. Because their, their, their speech does not make sense with what other things Jesus said. You get it? It's not what we say, no. This, but they agree, say, Jesus is saying Jesus only. But when we read what Jesus said in our songs, because Jesus said, it's not his word. It's the Father who sent me. So we can know who is speaking the truth and who is not. Come on now. Now those who don't have much command or understanding on scriptures will be easy fooled and prayed by them because they target mostly people that have little knowledge in the word. So that's why the Lord sent teachers. So if you don't trust the teacher, how are you going to escape them? You see it? If you say, well, no, me have to figure it out myself. I don't see it yourself. No, no, no. Me think so. Him say that, but me think so. You, you won't be really taught. You will just be hearing another side to the story. But that won't be a part that you will be applying. Because you are just treating it as heard information but not applicable information. So if it's not something that can be applied to you or to what you know before, then you can say, now I adjust my thinking of how I thought before because of this new information I received from the teacher. Then you can say you are learning. Also, but if you have not adjusted what you thought before and after I say it, you still think the same, you have not learned anything. just saying because if the whole thing is that we are just talking for you to hear of you and you're still old to yours then we are not really training you what does training mean and what does teaching mean you know if we're teaching you it can be that you still hold to the same information you had before and the one we give you is still on the shelf. That's why the teacher gives you tests and exams also, and grades to assess how are you processing the information given. Are you learning? Are you just hearing the information? As my mother would have said, go through one year, son. Come through the next. Huh? So he said, no, it would need you to, to then adjust your position if you are learning. And there's some that the Lord says who are learning and always learning and never coming to the knowledge of the truth. They will go and hear the man down the road. They will hear another man up on the hill. They will hear someone on the internet. They hear someone on the car. They read one look and book. They hear up to the madman on the road and say they're learning. But I'm sure that when you're sending your child out to learn, you don't send him at mothers. You have a particular place to send because you want him to be taught well. You don't want any anybody to teach them. The devil have some things can teach you. Things that you don't know about. Because he's been here longer than any man. Come on now. But at the same time, God don't want him to teach you. There's a lot, a ton load of knowledge out there. But it's not every knowledge God wants you to know. 
some knowledge do not help your faith I'm talking to you hey, that's why the tree that God rebuked and command that the man and woman should not eat of what was that tree named the knowledge of good and evil so they could say we will take the good and we leave the evil but the Lord said eh, don't eat nothing from it because this, the source is corrupt and if it is corrupt you cannot eat from it that's the Lord's instruction to you other men will say no you take the good one and left the bad one or the Lord say eh, eh, if it put in good and bad don't take nothing from it you don't know when a good one coming and a bad one coming so don't eat from it at all so that's why he said to the disciples either you make the tree good and its fruit what come from it good or you make the tree evil and its fruit that come from it evil but you cannot say it's a good tree but sometime good fruit come and bad fruit come sometime that's the culture we have around us that people say no good and bad is in everybody no jesus didn't teach that so if we follow the teacher jesus we get a different understanding not true from the world that not following the teacher jesus lord jesus i say if we follow in the teacher jesus we get a different understanding from the world that is not following the teacher jesus because his teaching is putting our minds in a different state of mind and a different way of reasoning that causes us to look at things differently that's what makes you his disciples and not the world's disciples come on now the world is discipling people you know? I said the world is discipling people the world gives you an image the world gives you a look the world gives you a certain kind of talk the world gives you a certain kind of feel he said all these things the world is putting on he says it's not from God as he says if you put all what the world have together he says three things it come down to lust of the eyes lust of the flesh pride of life come on he said these things is not from god come on he said these things is not from god he says anyone who loves the world know that these things coming from the world is not of god will of course not truly love god huh so if you say me love the world but we still love god and you read that then it's supposed to change because you receive what the word of god says as truth you must change your attitude now to the world system change your attitude to the mode of how the world is operating can you realize say god himself said those who love the world don't have the love of the father in them is either receive the teaching or you don't you know but once you receive the teaching what it do it changes you if you don't receive it you remain the same but you can't say i receive it and remain the same it's not true because the word of god the teacher doesn't teach you for you to remain the same you got it right that's why it's called discipleship when the lord was done with peter peter wasn't still just a fisherman <laughs> when the lord found him he was just a fisherman but when the lord started to disciple him he is more than a fisherman he's now an apostle of jesus christ he never went back to that fishing business is a different man from the man he knew himself to be because he'd been discipled by jesus christ you see many people are satisfied with church membership 
but they are not committed to discipleship. Discipleship is different from church membership. The culture of membership in church today becomes like your join a club. You become a club member and you meet the requirement to get the club membership. But they will tell you plain as church member, you can't tell me how to live my life, you know. You hear the, the church member talk? You can't tell me how to live my life now. No, not Jesus' disciple couldn't say that to Jesus. You can't tell me how to live my life. No. Any disciple say that to Jesus would not be a disciple. Not even Judas says so. So it is clear then that people have strayed far away from the truth that now they have church operating like club. Church operating like a social club. <laughs> when Jesus never built a social club and call it a church. We saw from the very foundation of what he built, it was disciples and discipleship. And when he sent the apostles out into the world, Matthew 28, verse 20, 18 to 20, he said to them, go into all the nations and make disciples of men. Never say make church member. Disciples. Come on. Of all nations. Baptizing them. Because the whole thing is that if they just want to be church member and not disciples, then you can't really change nothing in their life. They are just here for the information. They are not here for transformation. They just want to hear something new and we take you up on it. But they are not really here for you to change nothing in them. And I've been talking on that for years. That those who resist discipleship can be true disciples of Christ. Because this is not about membership. It's not a club. It's called the church. Church is taken from the word called ecclesia. The called out ones. He says, didn't he call unto him disciples? And those who he called to him, when they heard his voice, they obeyed him. That's why he could call them his sheep. Because he says, they obey, they hear his voice. Correct. Because he says, my sheep, they hear my voice. And a stranger, huh? A stranger they will not follow. Come on now. In other words, they are not going to be following those who the Lord did not appoint to lead them. Come on now. Now many still don't get that. They're still doing it their way and they believe that is freedom. They believe following the word. Some believe following the word is bondage and we're not going to be what they call it legalistic legalistic don't be so legalistic come on we, in, we are all one in Christ or oh, we are all one people we serve one God all of us is doing our best to serve the one God and God alone knows our heart no it's not God alone know your heart because we can know your heart by how you respond. And the Lord told us we can know them by their fruit. So if we couldn't know them, then he wouldn't say we shall know them. And tells us how we must know them. By their fruit. Correct. So if we can't see the fruit, then we would know them. Of course we can see the fruit. That's why it says you will know them by their 
fruit you know them by how they live what they say and what they do you know whether it is of god or not of god correct yeah so he says every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down every one of them he says every tree that's matthew 7 verse 19 yeah and he makes clear to you that want to say no good and bad in everybody he makes it clear to you in verse 16 to 18 you know them by their fruit he says do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles he says thistles don't bring forth figs and thorn bushes don't bring forth grape say people don't go and mango tree looking for banana that's what he's saying you, know? you don't see certain fruit from certain tree that's what he said so he says look what he says now in verse 17 even so did he say even so in other words in the same manner he says every good tree bears what come on now every did he say some good tree did he say most good tree did he say only one good tree bear good fruit and it's jesus no it's jesus talking and he don't say that he said every good tree every one of them bear good fruit a bad tree bears what bad fruit come on he says therefore said in verse 18 a good tree what no many not believe that no man me no a good man and he mean good and boy he do some more of the but boy he mean good still i remember I said no one of me not perfect sometime coffee sometime tea is that does that sound like what jesus is saying here don't take what i say take what he said i know i'm saying the same thing but if you can't take it there so you can't take it here so neither because it's the same thing i'm saying come on and he says a good tree cannot bear bad fruit did he say cannot or did he say might not cannot did he say cannot oh we're just reading it good man make sure you say it's work cannot now many people come to this good tree <laughs> and expecting to find some bad fruit and and you know that if you if you feel like your trust has gone with the with the chef and you don't too trusting and cooking for you you will taste things in your food and feel say something nah, so you know. because you, your your heart not clear towards the chef in, in our clear to the food but if you trust the chef all we have taste something funny you say mm. why taste all this time and the chef can explain it to you not true ah uh, my sister i know say when they cook the food and the, the paper got most tonight after me they try to take it out that's why it, not true or why when I mean, they put some salt in there why look too much good in there this time but me watch it next time for you but it still wasn't bad because it's still good in other words it's not something filthy they put into it that your tears in while a bad chef no business whether something filthy going there no he just want to say the food sell off what's the thing you see what i'm saying so 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 the thing is that he's saying no no good tree bears bad fruit none so i've been teaching that for a long time say no for yourself may god tell you don't take my word for it let me just tell you say you ask the lord because the lord cannot lie can the lord lie 
No, the word of God said it is impossible for God to lie. In other words, if God said this white wall red, it going to become red because he said Because his words have creative power to change the pigments in the color of this paint and make it turn to red when he said it. That's why I could have speak in a darkness and say, let it be light, and there was light. So that's why it is impossible for him to lie. You get that? Right? So if God said this is a good tree, I'm talking to you. I say, if God said this is a good tree, uh, hallelujah. So I, so I said to persons, don't make the good tree tell you say it's a good tree. Ask the Lord if it's a good tree. That not sound reasonable. Because anybody then, enough deceiver out there tell you say a good tree. And then when you eat, you realize, mm. belly start to run and, hello, your life they cut off and you realize, say, Hey, me hear about one of the upper paradise. Boy, that tree, they went bad. Hey, so you don't know. You don't know what they am. You understand? So, so you, but I, I told everyone a, a good thing. And believe me, if it's somebody who is misleading you, would they tell you, say, go ask the Lord? That's what I really try, I. Hey, the thief and the thief, me say, go ask the Lord if you're honest. And the Lord now go lie to me. Come on now. The Lord go tell me, say, you're a thief. Right, so if I made the invitation for all that come to this ministry, not just who stay here and fellowship here all the time, but even those who visit, ask the Lord about me is that being presumptuous is that being trickery and crafty can't you ask the lord and get an answer doesn't the lord talk to you So if the Lord says it's a good tree, you can eat of it. And you, after the Lord tells you it's a good tree, you can eat of it. You still have something and say, no, I'm not too trust that thing. I'm not too trust that No, no. Who you think you're contending with? You think you're contending with the tree? It's not the tree. Just tell you, say good, you know. You get it? They say if you get it. So so when God tell you say is a good tree, can you trust God? Say it good. So so God say God said Job in the Job chapter one. God said Job is a good man. God said Job is upright. God said Job is perfect. Although the world said nobody perfect in the world, you know. Yeah, but, but God said, the man is blameless and upright. And one who fear God and shun evil. Me know that, but not no believe that still. Do God say it, you know. God said even before the test start on job. And after the test over, now the same testimony was there of Job. The testimony went changed in between. Now the same testimony God made of Job in the beginning was the testimony at the end. So the Lord is saying, man, when I say this one good, he know when it talks, eh? You, you believe so? I mean, I know some, some they wonder. Some they wonder if you, if you can really trust it because 
You know, God, you remember in our creation, you make everything and say good and look how it and no. Mm, look how it's still now, Lord, because you make man and woman and say good and look what man and woman do. Uh, uh, eh? Did, did, did God say they were good when they sinned? No. So you see that when they sin, they are not good. That's why redemption and salvation was offered to them. That they could restore and become good. So God now keep nothing evil. He has not changed from that. It's just what is good he wants. Come on, talk to me. You know, and some good and some evil. I said, God don't want some good and some evil. Get the thing. Uh, some made this thing look mixed up and want it clear to you. You're here proper teaching, you know, say you're in proper teaching. Come on now. So he says then, you need to understand now, say if God say this can be trusted. It can be trusted. You don't still look for reasons to find what if it change overnight. You understand it? Eh? Okay. Funny good. Do you get the thing? Right. We want somebody understand it, thing, no man. Mm. So it says, a tree, a good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. It says, that's the destination for all tree that doesn't produce good fruit. Where is it going? Into the fire. Then you know where the place of the fire then God. How about the place the name again? Anybody don't know the name? You mean say up to the devil know it. And if you don't know it, why? You go find out. First class. Hello somebody. Because all the talk say boy. Everybody can go even somebody have to go to hell. Is that right? You can find out if you really want God. Because you don't see there yet, you know. And when you see there, you're not going to have an escape route. If you say, all right, look at it and go. And decide whether you want to come back. It's not a view. It's not a tour. Mm. And then I'm giving you a view. You know, and say, all right, take a view and think about it. Uh-uh. Because he gives you enough people to warn and to encourage you to do the right. Because you know God loves the right. Come on now, somebody. And he says, therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. By their fruits, you will know them. So he says, check out the fruit. But what was the fruit here? The fruit was that they feed the hungry, they clothe the naked. They care. <laughs> the fruit is in Galatians 5 verse 22 and 23. Character. Now a lot of people can talk. But you don't find that character. A lot of people have gifts. Speaking tongues. Interpretation of tongues. Prophecy. Uh -huh. Gifts of faith. Gifts of healing. Word of knowledge. Word of wisdom. Gifts of prophecy. Gifts of miracles. Uh -huh. All the gifts. What? You see none of the gifts listed there so as a fruit. No. That's why it says some will say, Lord, did we cast out devils? 
Didn't we do miracles? Didn't we prophesy in your name? And the Lord will still say, depart from me. I know you're not because this is the fruit he's talking about. Come on. This is the fruit. He says, again, such there is no law. Come on. Hello, somebody. Hello. And when you don't see that, no matter how gifted the person thinks he is, they lack fruit. And if they lack fruit, it's an evil tree. Evil tree cannot produce good fruit. He didn't say evil tree can prophesy evil tree can cast out demon no they were doing that evil tree can do no miracles no they were doing that God they believe in the name of Christ and exert faith in the power in the name that will happen but did they not believe in the power for internal changes in their ways in their conduct, in their behavior. See, that's what I'm teaching. I'm not teaching people here how to speak in tongues and how to interpret, how to prophesy and how to cast out devils. You must bear fruit. The gifts that the Holy Spirit comes with those things. But it's not by their gifts, he said, you shall know them. He says, by their fruit. And the fruit was speaking to the character. Hello. The fruit is not speaking to the abilities of what you do supernaturally through the gifts of the Holy Spirit. He says, no, the, the true nature of Christ. The nature, the spirit of Christ must be seen in you. Come on. And Christ wasn't loved by everybody. Hello, somebody. Am I talking right? I said Christ wasn't loved by the world. <laughs> Aren't you? We find that even the religious people didn't love Christ. Because Christ wasn't here for another religion. Christ was here focused on salvation of the souls of men and upon them gaining an eternal status in the kingdom of God to be joined ears with him. Hello. A share in his kingdom. And he says, they are after different things. They are looking at religion. And he said, belief kill and belief cure. No, it depends on what you believe in. Because if you believe in the wrong thing, no matter how much you believe in it, it's not curing you. There are people who believe in the devil for their salvation. And their devil worshippers that believe strongly in him and in his powers even profess that the devil slayed Jesus on the cross and that was his triumph. And see the cross as a victory over Jesus rather than Jesus' victory over the devil. And worship him. Their belief will not save them. You see? They strongly believe it, you know. But strongly believe in that will not save them. Because you have to believe in the truth. Is not believe anything and say, I believe, so that's it for me. Huh? And what is the truth? The word of Christ. The word of God. Huh? Jesus cried out when he said in John 17 
Verse 17, Jesus says to his father when he's praying, he says, sanctify them by your truth for your word. Your word is truth. Your word. The word of God is truth. Jesus is called the word of God. It's the word of God that became flesh and dwell among us. No, sir. And we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Praise God. But if we don't embrace what is coming from him and that fullness to take root in us, we will be the same like we never met him. And that won't mean anything good for us. Come on, somebody. Because you can't come in contact with the light and still live in like you're in darkness. Come on now. There must be a shift in how you live and how you think and how you speak, how you conduct yourself that show that the light is not just shining on you, but it is shining in you. You get it? Because some have the light shining on them. But darkness is still in them. He says the outer man, the outer works look pretty. Well painted up and nice. Come on, like a white sepulchre. Come on. But he says the inside. A dead man's bones. Corruption. Maggots and worms. The stench is being swelling inside. And they say, no, I'm all right on the outside. That was the religious crowd that was facing Jesus. Contending with him. And said they are doing it to the glory of God. And Jesus was saying to them, if you were of God, how you don't connect with, with one that God sent. They would not answer that question because they, of course, believed in their heart. God did not send him. And until that, that message resounds in your spirit that God sent the one who is sent to minister to you. You can't receive true ministry from them either. Until you truly believe God sent him. He didn't just come of himself. He's not just doing something of himself. But God sent him. Are you hearing this? The God sent him is the platform on which you can receive what the sent one is releasing to you you get it because if you don't believe that or is unsure that God sent him then you will also have that same response to what is given to you you get it if you're not sure about the messenger you're not sure about the message I'm telling your church are you hearing me Lord Jesus I say are you hearing me if you are not certain about the messenger you are not certain about the message and you've got to understand God never sent messengers with false message. Never. That's not the Lord. You have to be clear in your mind about that. If you believe that, no, it can be true with their false message, and it can work out somehow, somehow, because people just people, you're going to mix them up, and you're going to try to, at times you're going to be treating the evil ones as the good ones and the good ones are the evil ones because you're not making a distinction you're not what 
making a distinction between what is true and what is false. You're not making a distinction between what is good and what is evil. And if you say everybody have it in them, then you are not making a distinction. And if you don't make a distinction, you are going to fall in the same position like those people. They cried out for Christ and Christ come and they say, no, it's not him. He's still looking for another. And the Lord says, they missed, they what? They missed their visitation. It, was an, it should be an awesome time for them in the miraculous and in the power and in the grace of the Lord. But he says, no, their house will be left in ruins. He says, how long have I long to gather you? Like chicks, like a hen gathered her chicks. But you would not let me. It's not he wouldn't let them. They would not let him. Right, they would not come under his wings, under his covering, under his authority. They said, no, we will do what we see fit. We will do what our hearts tell us to do. Really? Come on. You know that is written in scripture. <laughs> and the Lord in his wrath swore that they would not enter. He said, how long have I called out to these people? Stretched out my hand to a stiff naked and stubborn people that will not yield and at a certain point, God made the decision to cut them off. I heard people say, God never give up on anybody. And I, I differ from that because I see enough in the word to know. God won't keep on holding on to things that's not going his way. And I realized that when they say, no, God don't cut off anybody, it wasn't true because the word does say he does cut them off. Romans chapter 1 from 18 to the end gives a whole dialogue that Paul starts out chapter 1 of Romans to tell them that God gave up on them because of these things. If God gave up on them, if God give them over to their own ultimate mind, you cannot say it's not cut them off. You cannot say it's not cut them off. You cannot say they're still connected. Because he said he gave them over. And Jesus himself taught that in St. John 15 verse 2. Jesus says every branch in me that doesn't bear fruit the father takes away that is also cut off that is also what cut off every branch in me that does not bear fruit he takes away and every branch that bears fruit what he does he prune them that they will bear more that pruning there is chastening of the Lord. Correction. Reproof. Instruction. He says, even when you're bearing fruit, he still have further instruction and correction to give you for you to bear more. And some don't take correction well. That's why they'll be cut off. Come on. Because you cannot be part of the Lord. And don't take correction. You understand that? Hello. 
And he told what's going to happen to the branches that are cut off. Exactly. So they, they, those branches didn't come out of the vine. He says it's the father cut them off the vine. They were in Christ, but the father cut them off. Because Jesus says, anyone in me that does not bear fruit, my father takes away. And he says, if anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is with that. They gather them and throw them into the fire. And they are burnt. Come on. That's talking about the destruction right there. Come on, somebody. We are not allowed. We can't keep running around this thing and doing it our own way and hope so we get saved at the end. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? We cannot keep running around doing our own thing and hope so we get saved because we had some good intention. We have to understand God have a prescribed way for salvation. And if you don't meet that requirement, you're not in it. It's not a gamble to say, maybe you're in it, maybe you don't. It's a cut, clean cut thing that either you're in it or you're not. You don't have to be guessing if you're in because there's specification there that you can judge by from what the word says to know if you are in or you are not that's why Peter could say to them say work out your salvation with fear and with trembling he says make your election sure make your what so if he say make your election sure can you be sure about your election of course now most don't teach it that way they make it like you won't know you're going to be saved till the day the lord come now if it's when the lord come you're going to know you can't do nothing about it and wouldn't it make sense to know from now to make the necessary preparation that when he comes you are ready come on now but some don't take correction so well they don't believe they believe they are here to correct the teacher and the teacher here to correct them so the correction is level we are here to teach one another. No. You didn't go to school to teach the teacher. Exactly why the school was set up. It never set up for you to come in as a student to teach the teacher how to teach. And they still have that rebellious nature. Teach the teacher how to teach. Come on now. So we, we don't follow that trend. That's a worldly trend. You are called children of obedience. The world is called the children of disobedience. You are called the children of light. The world is called the children of darkness you are called the children of God world is called the children of the devil you have to make up your mind which side you are on because there is a gathering God is gathering his people you know and those who are under false doctrine will gather to false teachers and those who are under true doctrine and looking for more true doctrine will gather with true teachers. But it's not going to be a mixture that true people under false teacher and bad people under good teacher. And somehow, somewhere down the line, they might get figured out. No, we know them. They are already gathering. 
Come on. Hello. I said they are already gathering. Jesus said to his disciples, don't say that the harvest is three and four months from now. He said the harvest is ripe. Hello, somebody. The harvest is what? It means say it ready now. Come on, somebody. So he said, but he said the laborers are few. So he said, not everybody out there saying, Lord, Lord, our laborers for the kingdom. Some are laboring for their own belly. Some are laboring for their own their own glory. Some are laboring for their own fame. To make a name for themselves. But you must know true laborers are laboring for your soul. No, sir. True laborers are what? Yeah, they are laboring for the welfare of your soul. And your, you can tell when they're true by their fruit, it's not by their gift. Come on now. You got it? Now, if more persons understood that, they wouldn't end up in an answness and some get their short cut. Because they would not be moving by gift. They'd be moving by fruit. They'd be judging it by fruit. Where is the fruit? It is not enough just to say people get healed. It's not just enough to say people get money and miracle. Are people's lives being changed for Christ? Are they truly serving the Lord? Or are they serving themselves? You get it? You can't know the fruit, me say. What I say? You can't know it. It's not something you have to keep guessing and wondering. What if it can be known? Because over the last say know them by their fruit if you can't know the fruit. So you must be able to identify the fruit. And it says, the fruit have all these qualities in it. It have all these qualities. Huh? Galatians 5 verse 22 and 23. It have all these qualities in it. He says that, that, that shows what the fruit is about. And he says, when you look at these qualities, you can tell it is there. So he said, don't go by the noise and the excitement and the crowd. He said, look for the quality. You get it? Look for the quality. And if you don't see that quality in it, don't be frightened by the hype and the lights and the glamour and all the noise that buzz that's been made around it is not of the Lord. It's not of the Lord. That's what of the Lord produce. Talk to me here. Because that's why he, he, he says, if if you are his divine and we are the branches, then the qualities in him will show in us. No, sir. But if those qualities are not there, you could have seen dream and vision to the year 2045. You could have seen vision so far until you wonder how you see so far. You don't reach nowhere yet because you must have this. And notice he didn't say the fruits of the Spirit is. He didn't say the fruits of the Spirit are. He said the fruit of the Spirit is. He's saying that all these are components of the one fruit. You don't have one part and don't have the other part. 
all of these parts these components make up the one fruit and it says you can increase in them but all of them is there that's why for the increase in the Lord say he prunes those who produce more prunes you what now the prunes have to do with the discipline the correction the training that is required to get more out of you not less out of you as many others suppose but to get more out of you because if it's going to be more fruitful there has to be a requirement for more isn't that so all you find say when people start to give something that little fruit come out tight and say see how much we do that's enough <laughs> come on but the last uh -uh. if it is really plugged in if it is really a part of the vine it will keep producing more and more and more and more and more you get it so it's not like oh it produced one big bunch last crap but this crap is getting lower now we have to look if we see one. It's soon catch up back next year. We know that that is showing inconsistency because of the connection. The connection is not quite there. It has a bridge of connection, but it's not properly connected to draw all the substance. Or if it is connected, it's not truly drawing substance from the source it's connected to. Correct. Correct. So if it doesn't draw, if it's it's in the vine, but it's not drawing from the substance of the vine. Because the Lord never said, branch beside me. He says, branch in me. Any branch in me that does not produce fruit, my Father takes away. It's, it's in him. But it's not producing. The Father's not going to say, well, it is bear before so. You're not bearing now, but even bear last year, but this year not bearing, but you can't stay. Ah, because God expects more. Are you hearing me, church? And when you forgive someone yesterday and say, Well, me forgive them yesterday, and know somebody is gonna hurt me today. God still expects more. Because what he says, those pruning is making more fruit in you. But some person, after being offended and hurt several times, will start to retract, withdraw. So instead of producing more fruit, they stop producing. Because I don't want nobody hurt me like that again. I don't want anybody cause me that kind of pain. So I make up my mind. Come on. The Lord didn't tell him to do that. Hello. But the flesh is impressing upon them withdraw flesh carries feelings and feelings is telling you eh eh you can't take this you think when Jesus was on the cross he was saying well I'm Jesus I can take this come on go ahead drive the nails in my hands my ear songwriter was saying it because i'll rise again go ahead drive it come on here it is drive it in my hand <laughs> no jesus didn't tell none of them to drive no nail in his hand he didn't tell them to put on no whip on him he didn't tell them to put no crown of thorn in his head 
He didn't tell him to do these things that they did to him, pluck out his beard, punch him in his face, spit in his face. He didn't tell him to do those. Those things are evil. Come on. He didn't tell him to do it. Come on, somebody. But he endured it. He what? He what? That's fruit, you know, man. Long suffering. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's fruit, you know. Hallelujah. And still have the audacity to say, Father, forgive them. That's fruit, you know. To be in pain and still praying for God to forgive who caused it. That's not man made. Oh, Lord God. That's God's love. And He said, if He poured that love in you, don't you have that love in you to give to others? Oh, Jesus. I said, don't you have it? I is only Jesus alone. Gone back at Jesus alone again. Only Jesus only. Oh, Jesus, they need to repent. Right, so the thing is that if you understand the principle, then you realize that Christ didn't do it to stand alone. Otherwise, he wouldn't say, anyone designed to follow after me. You see? If it's he alone, then there's no following after. It's just he alone. But he says, you, you, you desire to follow after me. First, deny yourself. He's telling you how to do it. He's what? The teacher is teaching not just for us to have knowledge, but to have an understanding. As those who don't understand cannot produce any fruit. Come on. If they're just going to become Jesus fan. They will just wonder and be amazed at what he did and worship him and say, whoa, how great you are. But they'll never do it. Jesus didn't come to get fans. Jesus came to make disciples. Some don't get that all now. They are satisfied in being Jesus fan. He just didn't come to have fans. He come to make disciples. And he said, if you believe in me, if you believe in me, the works that I do, you will do them too. And greater works than these, you will do. Come on, somebody. You know how much many people don't even believe they can do what Jesus do much more. Much more do greater. While it is Jesus who said it. It wasn't some motivational speaker trying to hype up the crowd to tell him, oh, you can be like Jesus and even greater works you can do. No, Jesus himself said it. So he's saying to you, he wants you to follow him. He wants you to walk in that power. He wants you to activate that grace in your life through him. And know that you, you can do the same. You can what? Oh my God. But how you going to believe you can do the same? If you don't believe that it is even real. 
you would only quote the words but you will not have the practice and so you don't want you to become like that. you want to have the practice practice the truth praise God practice the truth you with me here you know when you're getting anything right man you know when you hook up with the right alignment and plugged in you need to put it in action hello somebody hallelujah so don't tell me so you can't know and all you're left with now is to stay by yourself and hear for the lord yourself because you don't know who you can trust have mercy upon you hallelujah you need to know the lord and if you truly know the lord you can know and trust those whom he has sent it has always been that way for the lord every time the lord is going to do something miraculous for his people he sends someone to bring them into it he always uses a man to do something that will let them know he's present there so why don't you embrace it come on come on now suspicion and distrust and fear and unbelief offense and unforgiveness only hardens the heart more and more the more you try to hear the lord in that heart bitter heart in the heart the more you hear another voice talking to you too and you will become more and more unsure when the lord is speaking and when other voice is speaking because those spirits that you have in your heart is not of the lord is of the devil and you can't keep that bitterness and unforgiveness and offense come on somebody suspicion and fear in your heart and say oh i still got faith no you're only deceiving yourself you got to get you got to detox yourself from those things come on those things got to come out of you you get in it somebody it's got to come out and you have to take the time with the lord and say flush them out lord wash away my fears wash away the stress and the anxiety the insecurities the spirit of inti in, uh, being intimidated by the enemy and the opposition that has put me in a corner in survival mode trying to fend for myself when you are my defense come on somebody and come in the light of his salvation and i tell you it's, it's a glorious life i'm talking to you it's a what like you know excited about it and you need to get it man because some preachers just talk what the thing has gloom and doom your life going to get worse and worse and boy pretty soon we don't know we're going to manage down here <laughs> no come on you got to know those who know their god I said, those who know their God shall do great exploits. Come on, somebody. The hotter the battle, sweeter the victory, the darker the night, the more the light will shine. Come on, somebody. The greater the need, the greater God's provision. The greater the opposition, the greater our defense. Glory to God. We're coming through victorious. How great is our God. How great is his name. Hallelujah. You got to know that man. Don't give up on what the Lord has told you. Recall what he has said. And apply it to your heart. And push away every other thought. And feeling and view. That comes to, to weaken your position in faith in the Lord. Amen. Because if you believe, if a man say, I believe in the Father, but I don't trust the Son. I believe in the Son, but I don't know about the Holy Spirit thing. I believe in the Holy Spirit, but these persons, what they say, Holy Spirit, for me, I don't know what they mean. And the most wicked people, me say, Holy Ghost, feel. 
it will still have you disconnected from God because they are all operating as one the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit and the body which is the church is all operating as one so any discord you see happening in it is not for you to run away and start to get fearful of your own position in the body but be steadfast in it unmovable no so always abounding in the work of the lord and it says the god of heaven will keep your heart and your, your mind and your, your peace come on now you will be certainly rooted and grounded in him and have nothing to fear that's what god wants for you what you say come on somebody give him the praise all right we're gonna get some worship praise god hallelujah come on stand in your feet we